we were looking at how to make an LC oscillator yesterday. I mean, the first thing that occurs to everyone because of uh, earlier problems encountered in physics and so on is if you want to make an oscillator, you connect L and C in uh, parallel or series in a loop so that the energy is constantly exchanged between L and C and you have oscillation. Of course, the real oscillator is slightly more complicated than that. As we saw, if we have an ideal lossless L C or you have L C and some loss that is lossy L C compensated by linear negative resistance that is this is fictitious we cannot make this, but let us say that is the case in either of these of course, you get constant amplitude oscillations, but the amplitude itself is uncertain basically it depends on the initial energy in the inductor and the capacitor. Okay. Now, two things one is first of all we do not have an ideal linear negative resistance and even if we did it does not look like it is the most desirable thing. So, we will always have it compensated by some nonlinearity. the non linearity can be mild or hard that depends on uh, the particular implementation, but that is how it is going to be. Okay. So, this uh, I mean the exact type of nonlinearity there is really a zillion varieties, okay. but we take one particular case uh, something that you expect uh, based on your experience with other nonlinear devices that you have a negative conductance, but its output current is limited. Okay. So, a negative conductance with current saturation that is uh, what we consider. So, what we have is lossy L C compensated by a negative conductance with current saturation right. So, we intuitively understand how uh, these things work we have an L C network with a loss. The loss can be either in the inductor or in the capacitor and I would not go into the details, but uh, around the oscillation frequency it turns out you can always represent the loss by a resistance in parallel. The actual form of the resistance can be parallel series or both. Okay. and this loss conductance is of course, 1 by R p. Now, to this this is compensated by a negative resistance which is realized using a voltage controlled current source. Okay. So, if this is V x we will have the current source this way. Okay. We know that basically this is equivalent to minus g n right. Now, what we said was the characteristic of this is if I call this I x I x versus V x it follows g n V x in a certain range, but after that the current saturates to plus or minus I naught okay. and the voltages at which the current will saturate will be plus minus I naught by G n. Okay. Now, in this case what do you expect to happen? 
So, let us say uh, there is a very small initial condition on the capacitor okay. and we also said that how should we choose the value of g n? g n must be greater than g p. So, what this does is however small an initial condition you start with you will have a natural response that is a rising exponential I mean a sinusoid modulated by a rising exponential okay. So, the amplitude will build up okay and it will uh, essentially it will build up like this and it will reach these limits. So, once the amplitude reaches plus minus i naught by g n this does not deliver a current proportional to v x anymore okay it is no longer a negative conductance. In fact, if you simply look at the slope of this if you think of conductance as the slope of the I v characteristic the conductance is g n minus g n up to the uh, in this range and then 0 here right. So, in a way within that range it is compensating for the loss and outside that it is not doing anything okay. So, the amplitude will reach a certain point slightly beyond I naught by g n I think. So, we will see and then uh, uh, it will stop and where will it stop? It will stop where the energy dissipated here is the energy generated there okay. So, that is how you would calculate the uh, actual amplitude and that can be done okay. So, the way to do it is first you assume that the solution is periodic at a certain frequency. So, that means that every voltage and current can be written as a Fourier series and then uh, you apply the usual Kirchhoff's current law there is actually only one node in the circuit that is relevant right. I mean there are two nodes, but you have to write only one Kirchhoff's current law equation and uh, when you write Kirchhoff's current law the Fourier components at every harmonic must be balanced and from that you will get this okay. But we do not have to go into those complications our aim is not to study oscillators in depth. So, we will uh, study a simplified version of this case which actually works for uh, most of these cases okay. At least we will get an idea of what is going on. Is this part clear how it works qualitatively? So, the difference between this and the just the ideal LC or I, lossy LC compensated by a purely linear negative resistance is that in this case the amplitude will be fixed to some given value and that it depends on the amount of loss the GP in the uh, LC tank and the characteristic of the nonlinear voltage control current source. Any questions about this? And because you start with uh, G n greater than G p however small a condition you start with it will always blow up and it is guaranteed to go to the final value yeah. Why? Yeah, because uh, what happens is let us say we assume that uh, this V x is a sinusoid that spans exactly this much okay. Now, in this case this represents a linear negative conductance okay and because G n is more than G p the power generated in this is more than the power generated power dissipated there. So, it cannot that cannot be the balancing point right that cannot be the equilibrium understand. So, if it was exactly this or somewhere within this one then the energy the power dissipated here would be less than the power dissipated there and where is the rest of it going. So, in steady state they have to be balanced. So, what happens is this goes a little bit beyond that. So, the power dissipated here increases the power generated here does not increase as much because this is saturating and it will uh, you will find the balancing point ok. Any other questions? So, that is hap what happens in uh, any other circuit also typically uh, first of all in any oscillator right all the variables being 0 is a valid uh, solution that is I mean we can have this voltage across this to be 0 right that is perfectly valid. Now, no real oscillator will actually stay that way even if there is the slightest disturbance because of noise or something it will get started up and also there will other there will be other stimuli like uh, when you turn on a circuit it is like applying some steps somewhere in the circuit we may not be able to analyze cleanly what it is, but that is what it is right. So, it will always go there. So, uh, 
every oscillator will be designed such that if you set all the voltages to 0, okay, nothing is saturated, everything is operating in the linear region, the poles will be in the right half plane. So, that the smallest disturbance will cause a blowing up exponential and somewhere some saturation or something will limit the amplitude. Okay. Any questions about the basic idea of this oscillator? Now, once we get the hang of this, it turns out it does not matter too much. We will make G n greater than G p, maybe let us say we say G n is 2 G p, but uh, the details of that do not matter as it turns out. So, we can have something steeper okay. or we can have the most extreme case and you can see this is sort of the counterpart of the ideal op amp. Right? In the ideal op amps case, we assume that the gain is infinite but it has saturation. So, this is exactly the characteristic it has right. So, it is just a comparator like characteristic which saturates at plus minus i naught. Here also it is the same thing that means that this controlled source will either push i naught or pull i naught okay, depending on whether V x is positive or negative that is all. Okay. So, that case is easiest to analyze, but uh, uh, in spite of the idealization actually many of the other cases where G n is much more than G p do correspond to this. Okay. Is this fine? So, this is what we will analyze. Now, this part of the circuit is, of course perfectly linear and let us say that voltage I call V x and this is what I call I x. Okay. Now, what will be V x by I x? What is that function V x by I x? Please calculate it and tell me what is it? I think you have calculated functions like this before. So, I think you can probably write down the expression, but even if you cannot just evaluate it and let me know. All you have are 3 elements in parallel. So, you have to sum up the admittances of the 3 elements and then take the reciprocal that is all that is there to it. S L divided by 1 plus. Okay square L c. Okay. So, this is the I mean what kind of function is this band pass right clearly you have S L here. So, this peaks in some intermediate frequency at, S, uh, at 1 over square root L c and then it goes to 0 at 0 and infinity. Okay. I will write it as S L by R p times R p. Okay. So, this kind of also reminds us that this is an impedance and this function here goes to 1 at the resonance frequency. So, V x by x goes to R p. Okay. What will be the magnitude of this? It will start from uh, some low value. go up to R p at omega the radian frequency equals 1 over square root L c. What will be the phase? What is the phase at very low frequencies? Pi by 2. Why? Yeah, clearly I mean if you neglect the terms with s in the denominator, you are left with only S l and that also makes sense at low free this one this whole network at low frequencies because you have parallel combination the smallest admittance is what dominates right. So, at low frequencies it is basically an inductor very high frequencies it is a capacitor and at the resonance frequency the capacitive and inductive reactances cancel out and leave you with only the resistor.
So that's what it will look like. So, what is V x by I x at omega equals 1 over square root L c? What is it? What is the impedance at the resonance frequency? It is a real number equal to R p. Okay. So, let us keep this in mind and to this we connect our voltage controlled current source. Also, uh, what is the quality factor of the circuit? Uh, what is the expression for the quality quality factor? R p square root c by l. Okay. The sanity check, of course, is if you set R p to infinity, you will be left with ideal L c loop, right? Now, what does it mean to say the, the Q is very high? What will happen to these curves? The uh, magnitude and the phase. No, that depends on the value of uh, let us say R p is fixed, but you can change C and L. So, that uh, huh? it becomes sharper basically. Okay. So, the larger the quality factor, is that right? Okay. So, let us keep this in mind that first of all, if the quality factor is very high, essentially it allows voltages only around the resonance frequency. Okay. Assuming that let us say you have a constant amplitude current, that is what we are plotting, right? We are uh, sweeping the frequency of the sinusoidal current that is going into this circuit and plotting the magnitude of the voltage. What it says is it is only around the resonance frequency that you have any appreciable voltage at all. Okay. Uh, at other frequencies, the voltage will be nearly 0. Okay. The other thing is at the resonance frequency V by I is a real number that is there is no phase shift between voltage and current. Is it okay? Any questions here? This is just linear network stuff actually this has got a little to do with an oscillator uh, up to this point. Now, let us look at the other part of it. I will write it as g n v x, but we know that the characteristics are okay. essentially g n is infinity here and but there are saturation limits of plus minus I know. Okay. There is some V x. Now, let us say uh, V x is some periodic signal. I will show a sine wave, but we have to actually find out what it is. What will be I x? If V x is that periodic signal, what will be I x? Huh? Yeah, it will just be a square wave. So, it will be wherever V x is positive, it will be positive and where it is negative, it will be negative and so on. Okay. Now, let us assume that this square wave is uh, symmetrical that is this this duration is the same as that duration and so on. Okay. So, now this is I x of t and what is the Fourier expansion of this? The Fourier expansion of any periodic signal is this right. There are many ways to write it, but uh, 
I will write it like this. I will write it as a cosine with some phase phi k and an amplitude a k okay. that is the kth harmonic of the signal. So, what we have to find is uh, square wave and sine wave that will satisfy our oscillator right. So, I am just going through it step by step, so that you understand exactly how we do this. Now, what is a naught here in this case? 0 okay, because we assumed a symmetrical square wave. So, this is 0 and what is this? What is a k and phi k and imagine that I mean this is the t axis and this is 0. So, do you know the Fourier expansion of a square wave? Have you done this or no? What is the Fourier expansion of the square wave? What is that? 1 by pi times? One by? One by k factorial. No. Yeah, or I do not know how you uh, did this. Are you familiar with the sink function, right? So, and are you also you are familiar with the Fourier transform and the Fourier series, right? And the relationship between the two, you know. If you have a rectangular pulse of uh, height a and width t, what is the Fourier transform? What is it? What is the Fourier transform of this? Huh? Sink is fine, but uh, the inside what is inside the sink, what is in front of the sink? That is what I want to know. Okay, I will supply this part of the answer you supply what is here and there. What is in front of that? 1 by pi. What do you say? A. It is the area. The area of this is what is here? A T x. And what is inside? It will be, I mean what, what variable are we talking about here? This will be a function of what variable the Fourier transform? F. Okay, this is now f is the frequency in hertz. So if you want, this is equal to omega by two pi. Now f, of course, sink has a dimensionless argument. F is multiplied by what? Time. Which time? I mean, the Fourier transform is not a function of time. It is tx. Okay, so the width goes here. So that's a good way to remember it. So it's the area times sink of f times the width. Okay. So, from this how do you get the Fourier series? So, what is the function that we are considering? We repeat this, repeat the same curve at what interval to get a square wave. Basically, from this I have to get a square wave. So, what is the interval at which I am repeating this? Huh? What is that? 2 t x. So, this is t x. So, this is 0 and then I put another uh, rectangular pulse at 2 t x and another one at 4 t x and so on. I will get a square wave. right? So, I take a function and then I repeat it. I will get a, uh, I will get the square wave and how do you get the Fourier transform from there? Do you know this or then we do not have to go through this because I do not want to kind of change this into a signals and systems type of discussion, but uh, we can just go to the Fourier expansion of the square wave and move on. Yeah. Ah, so, then what will you get? So, 
So, multiply it with. So, we have to have A T x sink F T x times 1 over 2 T x delta F minus n by 2 T x. Okay. Now, 2 T x is actually the period of the square wave. Okay. So, anyway looks like you are not that familiar with this. So, the answer just comes out to be that the kth uh, uh, Fourier transform of a uh, symmetrical square wave. So, let me just give you this then you can scale it up. So, let us say this is plus 1 and minus 1. Okay. Now, uh, the d c is 0 that is the specific case I am considering from the sink you can get it for any case when you have d c 0 non 0 the width of the high and low may not be equal. Okay. That only means that if the width of the pulse is t w you are not repeating at 2 t w you are repeating at something else. Okay. Everything can be calculated, but I would not go into that I will just give you this particular case and what is the uh, first uh, amplitude of the first harmonic? That is 2 by pi. Okay. So, the first harmonic will actually look like this. Its peak will exceed the peak of the square wave. Okay. Uh, sorry, this is 4 by pi, yeah, 4 by pi. Okay. So, if the peak to peak value is 1, it is 2 by pi, it is the, here the peak to peak value is 2, so it is 4 by pi, yeah. Okay. And the third harmonic will be how much? I think at least this you know, right. How does how do the harmonic strength of a square wave fall off? 1 by 1 by what? Yeah, 1 by n, yeah. So, the next one will be one third of that and so on, right. So, what will that look like? Actually, it will be in the opposite uh, direction. So, it will be minus 4 by 3 pi and so on. So, at least uh, you have seen the constructions, right. So, what happens is if you sum the first and the third harmonic, you cannot see it is already getting more squarish. It does that and then if you add more harmonics, it becomes equal to that. Basically, you have to a single sine wave will have a peak in the middle and it is gradually falling off and you have to make the top flatter. So, this is what happens. So, anyway all this is not uh, the details are not relevant for our discussion. All we have to know is this square wave if I call this uh, S of t. So, what is it now? A naught is 0. So, I will sum from 1 to infinity and the amplitude is 4 by k pi and cos huh, k omega naught t. What is the phase? Huh, 0 for everything? For third one it has to be the opposite, right? Yeah, so there are many ways to do this. So, easiest thing is to simply multiply this by minus 1 to the n. But actually, this is the, the point is if you have a square wave like this whose uh, symmetrical square wave whose pulse is centered at 0, you have only cosine terms. Okay. So, that is what I was trying to get at here, that is all. And actually, what we are now interested in is only the fundamental component. Okay. Is this fine? Any questions? So, you can at least go back and brush up the Fourier expansion of a square wave and you can also see the relationship to the Fourier transform that is if you forget it you can always calculate it. The only thing is you have to remember that Fourier transform normally in signals and systems is evaluated on both minus f and plus f axis right. On whereas, uh, uh, 
when you write a Fourier series like this, we do not write the negative frequency terms. When we write it in terms of sines and cosines, when we write it as complex exponentials, we do. Okay. So, when you want to calculate the coefficient of uh, Fourier series in terms of cosines, you have to double what you get from the Fourier transform for plus omega naught, okay, because you have the components from plus and minus omega naught uh, combining together. Okay. Anyway, that is an aside. So, finally, the solution for this oscillator is very simple, right. So, what we have here is the current is what is the what are the coefficients now? Minus 1 to the n, what do I have? Huh? 4 by pi, that is it, i naught, 4 i naught by pi cross omega naught t, that is all. Okay. Sorry, I think I had to have k here and a k there. Okay. So, essentially this i x is a sum of uh, fundamental and its harmonics. Okay. So, that means that we will have something at omega naught, 3 omega naught and so on. Okay. Now, we know the impedance characteristics right? and when you when the current consists of multiple frequency components, how do we calculate the voltage? The current I x has multiple frequency components right? in general. So, how should we calculate the voltage? Huh? For each frequency, you have to calculate it separately. It is the current component at omega naught times the impedance at omega naught plus the current component at 3 omega naught times the impedance at 3 omega naught and so on. Okay. So, that is how you do that, but we already assumed that the quality factor is very high. So, what does it mean? Only there will be only one harmonic, okay. that is all, is not it? I mean essentially it will cut off everything else, that is the bottom line. So, I could have started off with that assumption, but I wanted you to be convinced of this also. So, if you have a very high Q uh, resonant network, which is how you start with, that is you start with relative, I mean you start with something that has as low a, a loss as possible, the loss will not be 0, but not so much. So, the characteristic will be sharp and uh, so that means that it will pass only one harmonic. So, then what can you say about the voltage V x? If it is only one harmonic, what is it? Huh? It is just you know that it is going to be a sinusoid, it is some V p cos omega naught t, where omega naught is very close to this one. Okay. We can assume it to be exactly the same as this and then see what happens. Okay. So, if this is the uh, if this is the voltage V p times cos t times square root L c, right. I have assumed that there is only uh, a frequency component at the resonance frequency that is for the voltage here. The current will have all kinds of other frequency components. Oh, sorry, yeah, it is T by square root L C. So, uh, now, now we can do the balancing of the harmonics. Okay. So, if this is V p cos t by square root L c in this expansion or uh, where is that? Yeah, here what do we have? The current will be how much? So, this uh, V x is this is V p right and the frequency is 1 over square root L c. So, what will be the current, what is it? I mean we have already calculated this right, k equals 1 to infinity minus 1 to the n 4 i naught by k pi cos k omega naught t 
okay out of this only the fundamental term what is the fundamental term 4 i not by pi cos omega not t okay is this clear now what are we saying that fundamental current will go through this impedance and give you this voltage okay now first of all is the phase consistent what is the phase at 1 over square root lc huh? 0 so if i x is uh, 4 i not by pi cos omega not t what will be the form of the voltage what is the phase of the voltage or what's the expression for the output voltage if 4 i not by pi cos omega naught t goes through this uh, impedance what is the output voltage omega naught is 1 over square root lc it's just multiplied by rp right it is 4 i not rp by pi cos omega naught t okay now is that consistent with what we have assumed right so here also we have exactly the same cos right i mean if this came out in a different phase we know that hey the frequency cannot be this one but it does come out to be that okay you can sit and solve this sit and write the expression for the harmonics and solve this but we can see that easily also so basically at uh, omega naught there is no phase difference between the current and voltage okay and also when this voltage goes through the nonlinearity to give you the current there is again no phase difference because if this is cos omega naught t the fundamental of that square wave will also be cos omega naught t so finally it balances out so what is the output voltage of this oscillator and g n has a characteristic like this what is v x what did we calculate just now 4 i naught r p by pi cos omega naught okay. so mainly i mean this function is of course this is a time reference we do not know what the phase is but this is the amplitude okay it will oscillate with an amplitude 4 i naught r p by pi so it depends on i naught which comes from the nonlinearity of this negative conductance and depends on r p which is the loss okay is this fine and now you can evaluate i mean you assume that this is Vx, you calculate the Fourier components of this and you will get exactly this result if you neglect all the harmonic voltages across the tank. If you have a high enough quality factor, only the fundamental voltage exists across the tank okay is this fine yeah i mean there is actually only one voltage in this whole circuit right this is the this is what we normally call the tank so across that we'll have only the fundamental Yeah, but that is true at the fundamental frequency, right? That is what we calculated. Okay. I mean, if you are not convinced, what you can do is you assume that Vx is of the form Vp cos omega naught t plus phi and then try to calculate the harmonics, but this is too, I mean, this is somewhat painful. Okay. 
we are not assuming that all of this current flows through RP. We are assuming that the fundamental component flows through RP. And if the fundamental component is at the resonance frequency, that is true, right? And all the other harmonics will pass through the where? Huh? What happens to all the other harmonic currents from the negative conductor? Where, where negative conductance? Where does it go? Where will it go? Huh? The fundamental current from this goes through RP, right? So that's what gives you this relationship. But this is a square wave current. The current in this is a square wave, so it has higher harmonics. Where does it go? Huh? L and C. Only C, right? These are all at higher frequencies than the resonance frequency. All of it just goes into C. Okay. Is this fine? The calculation look a little involved, but the key things to remember are that uh, the Q is high, so only the fundamental uh, only one frequency. In fact, we'll say that because of this tank voltage is of the form V p cos T by square root L c. Okay. From this we get the current from G n which will be Okay, and the fundamental component of that is is that right? Actually, this should have been. Uh, I think actually this is not even. Uh, okay, this must be. K minus one by two, I think. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I messed up everywhere. I think it's not. Uh, okay, because then for odd k, this is only for odd k. Uh, actually, the I didn't do this rigorously at all. So let me say that this is uh, for this uh, for a square wave which is alternating between plus and minus one, you will have. So that's what that's what we'll have to do. Okay. So that's what I was. Uh, so if this is minus one to the k, then this will be the two k uh, plus one harmonic, right? Is that correct? For k equals zero, then you will get the first one. Okay. Or you can run k only over the odd uh, numbers. Then the reason I like this is this gives you the dependence directly, right? It's inversely proportional to the harmonic number cross k omega naught p and minus one to the in this case, it is k minus one by two. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. So. Yeah. So this is what it is. So the fundamental component is that one. Now we also know that at the fundamental component at uh, one over square root LC, V by I of the tank is a real number RP. Now, there is, this is possible because this and this have the same phase, right? Both are cos t without any extra phase. If that is not the case, this you could not satisfy this. Okay? If this had some phase, this had some other phase, you would have to be operating at a point where the impedance is not purely real. 
So, now the impedance is real, the current and voltage are in phase. So, essentially 4 i naught by pi times R p equals V p. Okay. So, wherever the oscillator starts from, the it will go and settle to this amplitude. Okay. So, I had not planned on spending so much time on the L c oscillator, but okay, at least hopefully now you understand that uh, the amplitude will get stabilized and it depends on the nonlinearity of the active device and the loss in the tank. If you have a more lossy tank, what can you say about R p? As uh, loss increases, what happens to the value of R p? It, it decreases, it decreases okay, because this is a parallel L c tank. If R p is infinity, it is lossless. Uh, if R p is uh, small, it is lossy. So, if you have a very lossy tank for a given I naught, it will oscillate at a smaller amplitude. Okay, that is what this is saying. And if you want to increase the amplitude, you have to push more I naught, that is, you have to dissipate more power. Okay, I naught will eventually come from some power supply, right. So, you will have to dissipate more power. Okay. So, this is as far as we will go with the LC oscillators and in fact, this it turns out is the model for a very, very commonly used LC oscillator. The only thing you do not know now is how to make the G n using transistors. Okay. So, there is a circuit which is a differential pair with some current source whose value will be I naught and it behaves exactly like this. It will push plus or minus I naught into the tank and you will get this voltage. So, essentially you have got a head start on RFIC design if you want to take it. Because this circuit will be discussed there as well. But hopefully, is this clear? I mean, it is involved because I think you are not uh, too familiar with the uh, first of all, we do not do any calculation where uh, we have many Fourier components, right. Normally, in the basic courses, we stick to just sinusoids at one frequency. So, here we do have many, but again, the key things to remember are these three that we have high Q. So, any voltage across, I mean, for a given current amplitude, if you just look at the shape of the impedance it looks like you can have only voltages around the resonance frequency. Okay. So, let us say it is we will say that the voltage can exist only at the resonance frequency and move on. So, then you can do the analysis may be I could have started that way. So, if you do that then you know that uh, you have a sinusoid across the tank the current from the control source is a square wave and there is a certain relationship if the if this is cos the fundamental component of this also will be cos. Okay, it will be in phase okay. and that is consistent with the tank voltage and tank current being in phase at resonance. So, everything is consistent. Okay. So, you will have as long as you are able to neglect the you assume that all the harmonics go into the capacitor, the fundamental goes into the resistor and creates a voltage and that gives you this relationship and this is actually quite accurate, it is not very far off. We assumed we have assumed that this is very abrupt, but this is very much true as long as G n is much more than G p. Okay. Even if G n is 2 G p actually it is reasonably true and that is how you to ensure startup every oscillator will be like this. Okay. Now, of course, we do not always make only L c oscillators, but what I mean is every oscillator will be such that at startup the poles will be in the right half plane. So, that you have a blowing up natural response which will get limited by the nonlinearities of the circuit. The specific nature of nonlinearities is very different. Okay. So, after this we will look at uh, uh, an oscillator using op amps. Okay. In fact, that is what I had planned to do first. We have been looking at op amp amplifiers and op amp filters. We will also look at how to make oscillators with op amps. You know one type of oscillator that is the Schmidt trigger, okay. but that is some horribly nonlinear oscillator. So, we will look at something that is closer to this that is you have poles in the right half plane, you have a blowing up uh, uh, I mean sinusoid modulated by an increasing exponential which will get eventually limited. Okay. But if you have any questions about this, uh, please bring it to class and we can discuss that. Yeah, now uh, yeah this particular circuit is used when you have physical inductors. Okay. Now, you can use uh, like for instance using active circuits and capacitors you can realize an inductor, but when you have that 
you will probably let that active circuit also do the work of replenishing the stuff. You will not, the, that circuit will not look like this with this parallel uh, current source, okay. So, because if you make an inductor using active circuits, you can presumably also make an inductor with a negative loss, okay. So, we will do that. <coughs> 